Well, leading us into the afternoon, temperatures are already touching 90 degrees outside. Journey, if you go outside right now, you can feel the heat and humidity mm -hmm. are back in a big way. And that's just some of the impacts we'll be talking about over the next several days. But here's a look outside from on top of the Simmons Bank building looking off to the west. We've got a little bit of cirrus clouds trying to move in. That's associated with a storm complex that is bringing in some cooler temperatures for parts of the state. And you can see that here on visible satellite. Look at the temperature difference 70. Locked in with clouds, also showers and thunderstorms. I'm going to show you radar coming up in just one second, but it's 93 already here in Little Rock, 95 in Camden. And here's what it feels like out there because of the humidity. It already feels like 100 in Little Rock, feels like 103 in Camden. We do have a heat advisory in effect all the way until 8 o'clock this evening for all the counties you see shaded in the orange, and that includes a large chunk of the THV 11 viewing area. But I did mention we do have a band of showers and thunderstorms rolling through North Arkansas. So if you're watching us in, say, Newton County, Searcy County, Stone and Izzard counties, you will have a pretty good chance of some showers and thunderstorms as that band continues to make its way from the west to the east through the afternoon. Here in central Arkansas, our chance of a pop shower thunderstorm is very slim, 20% or less. So with that said, the temperatures are going to be all over the place. Much cooler in North Arkansas, highs only into the low 80s. Meanwhile, we fry here in Central Arkansas with the temperatures topping out into the mid to upper 90s, but that feels like 105 to 110. This story, it's going to continue in terms of the heat, dangerous heat going into the next several days. I'll have more on that forecast coming up. All right, Nathan, thank you. Well, having got this very moment, a chance to get your foot in the door with the U.S. Postal Service. They're looking to hire over 100 people at an event here in Little Rock. Pay starts at about $26, but you must have a CDL. It ends at 1 o'clock, so there's still a little bit of time to get out there. It's happening at the address on your screen, and that's 4700 East McCain. We're following new developments from earlier this morning as Pulaski County deputies investigate a robbery at a Dollar General in Little Rock. This is video of the store just off Highway 365 South. At this hour, it remains open even after deputies say someone apparently broke into the business. Right now, no word on how much was stolen. However, this is an active investigation. This afternoon, Little Rock Police need your help finding the person you see on your screen. Wilson Portillo is now wanted on now two counts of capital murder. Police believe Portillo is connected to a double homicide Sunday night. That shooting resulted in the death of an 11 year old boy, an adult male named Norberto Cruz. If you have details on Portillo's location, you should call police. As students head back to campus, concerns are growing regarding crime in college towns like Fedville. One student attending school there say, uh, says her car was recently stolen right out of her own yard. According to Fedville police, crime has been up since summer started. Police also blame minors and young adults for most of the crimes they've been seeing. You typically see when the weather uh, warms up, you, you do see more crimes of opportunity when it was as pertains to uh, you know, property crimes. They say to be on the lookout for people going around checking door handles. Police also encourages you to always lock your doors and do not keep valuable items in plain sight. Some students across schools in Pine Bluff will have to get used to seeing armed security officers around campus. According to the district, they're doing this to increase safety this year. 13 of the 23 officers will be armed until eventually all of them are. The move has faced criticism for the community, but the district's security director says it's for the best. Even in cases of active shooters, um, police response is three minutes up to seven minutes. Uh, but if we have armed officers at every campus, we'll be able to attack that threat immediately. Baker says each officer must undergo 60 hours of training, and with that, they must clear multiple background and child maltreatment checks. Members of the Pulaski County Special School District came together to honor one of their fallen. Heavy emotions can be felt as the community remembered the life of Victor Montgomery. He served as a security officer for the district before being killed by a driver last August. Victor's mother also attended the event and shared what she misses most about her child. 
I miss my son very much. He was my he was he would stand by me. He called me every day, every night before he go to bed. And I just loved my son. The district says local police will now monitor school traffic with hopes of stopping such a tragedy from happening again. To the road department and nothing has been done what they said that they were going to do. The lie you tell. Wow. The what lie you this? tell. Wow. That's, that's, Sir, that's this. You know what I mean? And well, that was the scene last night as Jefferson County's quorum court gathered for an official audit review. Members of the court are refusing to approve more money to be used by Gerald Robinson. That's the county judge. The reason they claim he's been mishandling funds. Tables started turning when some justices tried to hold a vote to remove the current chairman. Go ahead with the agenda. So we can vote, vote it up or down. Vote it up or down. We need to vote for a chair. You just okay. going to ignore what everybody else wants and do what you want. Lloyd, to do. we're not. That attempt to vote and a new chairman failed. In the end, the official auto report revealed some errors on behalf of the county. For a more in-depth look at this story, just visit THV11.com. In your election central, a lawsuit by the state's attorney general is causing more back and forth regarding the November ballot. At this hour, we are still working to learn how the Arkansas Supreme Court will decide on the fate of the proposed abortion amendment. However, yesterday, Attorney General Tim Griffin sued to have paperwork submitted for two other petition groups. The group Arkansas for Limited Government saying they also followed the rules when submitting the abortion amendment. And of course, we are working to find out if or how this will affect the court's decision. Well, a lengthy conversation between presidential hopeful Donald Trump and Elon Musk has become the talk of the campaign trail. Natalie Brand has more on the wide range of topics discussed last night. He actually did something that was impossible. In a two-hour interview with Elon Musk on the social media platform X, former President Donald Trump recounted last month's attempt on his life and said he'd be back in that same Pennsylvania county in October to campaign. What was it like for you? Not pleasant. I didn't know I had that much blood. The doctors <laughs> later told me that the ear is a place that is... Uh, a very bloody place if you're going to get hit. Musk, who also owns Tesla and SpaceX, reiterated he's backing Trump and said he wanted to reach independent voters. You are the path to prosperity, and I think Kamala is the opposite. With the race tightening, Trump stepped up his attacks on his Democratic rival, Vice President Kamala Harris. Third-rate phony candidate. She's incompetent. She hasn't done an interview since this whole yeah. uh, scam started. In response, the Harris campaign said in a statement that Trump's entire campaign is in service of people like Elon Musk and himself, quote, self-obsessed rich guys who will sell out the middle class and who cannot run a live stream in the year 2024, referencing the event's technical difficulties. The Harris campaign says the vice president has been working on her economic agenda and will roll it out this Friday during a speech in Raleigh, North Carolina. Campaign officials tell CBS News she will make tackling inflation a, quote, day one priority and will also take on corporate price gouging. Wednesday, former President Trump will also be speaking in the battleground state of North Carolina on the economy. Natalie Brand, CBS News, the White House. Practice is getting underway for some students, which mean they could put themselves more at risk for injury. We share how schools are working to keep them safe at 1217. And yards around Central Arkansas continue to get brown and crunchy. We have the wildfire danger continue to go up now for the southern half of the state. It's at a moderate risk. I think this trend will continue to go up because our chance of rain for the next several days is pretty low. I'll show it to you coming up in my forecast.